Jeanette, obviously I've given you a bit of an intro in terms of what you do, but um, yeah. tell, us, tell, us, tell us what you do for a business. Okay, so um, I'm a consultant for Arbonne International and uh, they are a health and wellness business um, and um, they promote um, vegan, clean nutrition skincare and cosmetics essentially um that's really important to me because i'm a vegan personally have been for many years so i've always bought products that are kind to the environment kind to animals and also kind to our skin as well so um i've, I've researched at length over the years a lot of different products different companies different ingredients um really looking for um safety and also for kindness to animals and the environment so so our bond was an ideal fit for me. So I was a product user, if you like, before I became a consultant. Um, and becoming a consultant has helped me talk to people about the ingredients in products and how we um, adopt a cruelty-free lifestyle, that kind of thing. So that's what I do. But that's that... not my day job. My day job oh. <laughs> was um, I'm in HR and change. Um, so held several very senior corporate roles in HR and change and decided to take a sabbatical oh. um, to help my friend open a dog rescue. Um, <laughs> so there, so I started running my Arbon business whilst I was off, if you like, from my day job. Um, and actually, this has now took over my life. So, and I'm, <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm still at the dog rescue as well, which is <laughs> Well, I was going to come on to that. I'll tell you what's <laughs> really nice about what you've just said, though, is that you have found a business that supports your values. Yes, absolutely. Your world, you know, your, the way you live, the way yeah. that you approach life, you know, what you put inside you and, and how you feel about, um, you know, what happens when animals do get kind of yeah. mistreated yeah. within that kind of testing environment. And it's brilliant that you found a company that aligns to how you yeah. feel. Yeah. Uh, and I bet that empowers you to a degree. Yeah. And it took a lot of searching, actually, because um, very often um, some of the ingredients that you wouldn't find very desirable, really, if you think you're putting them on your face, mm. they're actually coded as something else than the ingredients. So you might look down the ingredients of a product and not realize that actually what you are um, consuming or using is um, cochineal or squalene from sharks insides or anything like that. You might not know that because on the ingredients it's coded as something different. Whereas Arbonne's philosophy is that we won't touch any of those types of ingredients um, and all our products are clinically trialed, um, cruelty free and free of any of these ingredients that we have a view might be toxic because they're the byproduct of another industry if that makes sense yeah because i know that um certain and i'm not going to obviously get into the, the, the discussion today but i remember when i worked for yell and i went to see a <coughs> a scientist actually you had an advertisement yeah. in yell beautiful house over in uh, just outside craven arms and he was a real kind of eccentric fella and he was talking about cancer and the chemicals that are in shower gels, which are yeah. cancer causing, these same chemicals that they use to clean our floors. Yeah. And, and, and they're saying, oh, put it on your skin as well. And you think, yeah. you know, I, I, I do truly believe that we are part of one big experiment anyway, as, yeah. as human beings, you know, the, the products. And I'm not going to talk about what's happening right now, but I do believe that um, most certainly with the food industry as well it is very much a case of well I'll give it um, and we'll see what happens afterwards yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is like, oh, that's, that's quite scary so it to is. Be, it yeah, is. And so to be vegan you you kind of omit yourself from probably 70 percent of the influences of these other yeah chemicals and other other, other products which yeah. aren't really good for us but that's, that's yeah. brilliant so yeah. um so obviously in terms of our body, it matches your values. What was the kind of, what was the, the thing that tipped you over the edge? What inspired you to say, right, I'm going to do this? Well, obviously I had the time available because mm -hmm. um, I'd, um, I'd started this sabbatical, but I didn't want to start another job that was full time because I wanted to dedicate the, the sabbatical time that I'd taken um, to volunteer at the dog rescue. 
and I also volunteer at Hedgehog Rescue as well. Um, so <laughs> actually, so cool. my week is full already. So I didn't actually need another job, but um, this was a business that I could fit around other things. So yeah. if I need to be at the Hedgehog Rescue, if I need to go in and do an emergency run to to save some hedgehog that's been found in the road or whatever, or if I need to go and do a run to rescue a dog from crisis, I can do that. And my business wow. fit in around. Fit, fits around it. Yeah. Tell yeah. us a bit about because I, I noticed on your social media you say you're a doggy foster mummy. Um, yes. So, so what happens? You you just like well, you, you foster dogs. I mean, how does that work? Well, what happens is at our rescue we don't have any kennels, right. so all the dogs just live in a house. It's a big house to be fair. <laughs> with a fair bit of land. All the dogs just live in a house and they live. They sleep on sofas and they um they run in the field and they just they're free completely kennel free no the first the first song that came to mind then was born free <laughs> <laughs> as free as the wind blows i can see all these dogs just running around the house and making yeah. themselves making themselves scramble egg and toast and oi i'm watching these dendas get off me setting sleeping on sofas <laughs> watching the footy yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. so um, how do the humans fit into all this then <laughs> well um the lady who owns it is a very good friend of mine and yeah. she has some lots of friends like me who go and help her volunteer so at any one time we'll have about 60 or so dogs on the site but one of the things that's really important for us is that some of these dogs have come from abuse and neglect yeah, and you can't just rehome them to somebody yeah, yeah, um yeah. so what we do the role that i play as well as a doggy foster mum is that i take that dog temporarily into my home and train it, I teach it to be not protective over its food, I teach it to not be scared of the hoover, I teach it not to be scared of the doorbell or anything like that. So that when that dog does eventually go to a permanent home, it's going as a much more well-behaved dog. Um, so, and we feel that that's more successful in the transition. Whereas if you just go and pick a dog out of a cage, you don't know what background it's had. You don't know what socialization it's had. You don't know if it's good with kids, good with cats, good with other dogs. Um, you don't know if it's good with loud noises and flashing lights. And, oh. So we make sure that the, the new owner is well prepared for that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. one of the foster mums who, who gets them sort of ship shape, if you like. And that can take a long time. So I've yeah, had some yeah. dogs that have took four weeks and they're ready and they're off and they've found a permanent home. And then I've had other dogs that might have been sued through more significant abuse or neglect that have took a very long time, five or six months, but actually they have come around and they might have been on medication and we fix all that problem before they go out. So you're, so, you're, so you're almost like the animal whispering <clears throat> that there's been several programs <laughs> on TV with these, you know, Americans and whatever who go around yeah. and they calm dogs yeah. down and they, Help them. So you are you are that you're one of those. Yeah, but I'm only a volunteer, so I'm not particularly I'm not being qualified or anything. We're all just volunteers, but we have safe, stable, kind, friendly homes that we can help these dogs work through some of the problems and. That's and fantastic. Well, so. if anyone's listening and they want to support Jeanette yes. or support the um, the fostering of the dogs, yes. whether that be with money, whether that be with time, with your home. Get in touch, get in touch with her, please, yeah. because, um, you know, far too many people, you know, and it's happened recently by me where two dogs have been treated badly. Mm. And unfortunately, someone's lost their life because of it. Mm. Um, but, you know, obviously the first blame is on the dog. Well, if the dogs were locked in a shed for 24 hours yeah. of the day, seven days a week, how are they going to kind yeah. of be? And... Um, yeah, it's a shame. I mean, it's fantastic what you do. Absolutely. It fantastic. takes a long time for a dog to decompress as well. So I've I've got a dog at the moment. He's a 58 kilo hooch dog, right? Okay. So from Turner and Hooch, yeah. So I mean, he was he was chained in a yard for three years. Yeah. So for the first three years of like his life, he didn't know family, he didn't know people, yeah. he didn't know other dogs, yeah. he didn't know cats. So, so, so yeah. it took him a good, I'd yeah. say, ten to twelve months to yeah. decompress. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But he's such a beautiful dog now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's massively successful. And we feel like that's a more successful outcome for the new owner as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. because um, if a new owner takes on, on one of these dogs, they deserve to have that preparation and that yeah, lifelong support. Absolutely. Fantastic. So um, with the Arbonne business, yes. um, tell us about some of the challenges that you've had to overcome. 
Um, well, working in the business is amazing, really. There's, it's a very supportive business. Um, our whole philosophy it was set up 40 years ago by an entrepreneur called Peter Pettermark, and he um, he led the development of a premium um, skincare brand. But he was very clear it had to be kind to people, kind to the animals and kind to the environment. Um, and so what he set up as a result of that was rather than pay multinationals large sums of money to advertise, we don't pay any celebrities to use our products. Um, but what we do is we pay people like me to be a consultant to promote those products. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so the, the, I guess the challenge really is not in the company or the products because that's that's amazing but very often people might have a negative view of an, M an MLM which is a multi-level marketing company mm -hmm. um, and um, sometimes that's a barrier for people to overcome yeah. Um, yeah. B before they sample the products yeah. Um, yeah. but if anybody's looking for sort of part-time flexible work I would absolutely urge you to do your homework I've had a look at all of these different companies, obviously, because I was searching for the cleanest, most vegan, environmentally friendly brand. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are other brands out there as well. So if somebody is looking for that type of work, then by all means, get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. Or if you find it, but just do your homework on the yeah. brand because yeah. it will all be there. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of transparency around ingredients and products and things like that. Um, so, um, that that would be kind of my sort of recommendation but that was the initial um barrier really was for people yeah, saying yeah. well i don't know the brand as yeah, well as yeah. i know a brand that's from boots that might have been tested on animals let's say so um some of it has been getting the name of our bond known um yeah. it's a much bigger brand in the likes of america of and australia not. actually yeah, yeah, um yeah. but it's it's growing in the UK. I, 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 I think I think the key message that needs <coughs> to come out and the key element which will attract people are the values that the company hold yeah. in how, what they use, yeah. um, the fact that it's not tested on animals. You know, these are all values which people hold dear and hold yeah. high. And, and even more so now, there are more people now who have got that mindset than they were yes. 10 years ago yeah so yeah. I, I think i think the main thing for you to kind of um focus on with any kind of messaging that you've got going out there would be about the education yeah and almost yeah. do a comparison do you know that this well-known brand don't mention the brand so even yeah. Yeah. Have, a, have an empty bottle um tests on but 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 if yeah. you're happy with that fine and they use this chemical, yeah. which is cancer. Called. Obviously, you don't want to be discrediting people to a degree, but you want to also say, look, you've got this where you're kind of not doing any positivity to the world. Yeah. And then you've got this where it's cruelty free. Yeah. It's chemical free. It's this free. It's that free. And then people will decide because people say, well, OK, I come on pain for that. And it's got all this stuff in. You know, you know, no wonder my skin's all dried out, whatever. And, yeah. and just to get people thinking about it, yeah. my, my, myself personally, I, I think when it comes to MLM, it's got to be about the product. I know, has, obviously, yeah. the money uh, comes when you recruit people, but if the product can't stand on its own two feet, in my opinion, in my opinion, then it's a waste of time. And I and I know exactly. what Arbonne can. Yeah, exactly. Got, got, and that's re that's a really important distinction, actually, is that no consultant from Arbonne is paid to recruit people. So if yeah, I recruit no. you, it's it's your choice. I don't get money for recruiting you. Um, now some some LMMs do, and that's where it's kind of got a little bit of a bad name because people say, well, they're only recruiting me because they earn fifty quid or whatever. Um, but Arbonne have chosen not to do that. They've chosen to focus on um, the product turnover rather yes. than you know signing people up if you like because yeah. um it can be seen as a bit dysfunctional really so yeah. well, um, well the great thing about that for you bro is it means that your focus then is on building that person up correct and getting and, them and building advocacy for the product rather than yes you know yes. trying to get people if you like um yeah yeah and the other thing about the product as well is um even if you're not vegan or even if the animal treatment thing isn't important to you what is yeah. important in some of these ingredients is that there is no downstream impact for the environment. Right. So when we use a lot of these products, like you were saying about shower gel and things like that, you know, we flush a lot of that down the drain when we've had our shower. Yeah. 
well, what, what are those chemicals doing in damage terms to our rivers? And, and so actually um, having a clean product is not only good for you, but it's also good when that product is flushed away and for the a downstream impact on the environment as well. So there's, there's, See, there's I mean, there ha there's, there's, been, there's been countless studies done where, yeah. and, and they've actually tested water, which has been recycled yes. and put back into the system. And they are finding chemicals naturally occurring human chemicals yeah. but also chemicals which aren't so naturally occurring which some people yeah. do take on a weekend for a bit of enjoyment yeah. so <laughs> absolutely what you're saying there is is, is spot on and, and again it kind of keeps with that whole values and environmental message yeah. Um, yeah. good morning judy allen thanks for joining us today and hey zo zo heb good to, <laughs> good to see you too um oh my favorite question jeanette yes Tell us one thing about you that not many people know about. <laughs> oh, um, well, um, so I'll tell you something actually about my health. So a, a few years ago, um, I, um, I, I had some issues. I've, I'm actually disabled. I've got a disability in my back. And the pressure on my spine was causing my hip to constantly dislocate. So um, a, a good few years ago, I actually spent about 12 months on a pair of crutches because they were so worried that my hip just dislocated at the drop of a hat. Um, and um, they, the, the, the future looked a bit bleak, to be honest. They, um, they started to talk about, you know, in later life, what I might not be able to do and so on and so on. Um, and one of the things that prompted me to pursue the Arbonne product range more deeply um, was for its nutritional benefits, because um, the, the doctors were suggesting that some dietary supplements might help, right. um, but that I needed to take a good long look at some of the things that I was in. And, and I had a fairly good diet because I was a vegan, so yeah. my, my diet was fairly clean. Um, but I perhaps, um, I perhaps wasn't eating as much protein as maybe I could have been. Um, and so um, that's where the Arbonne products did help me because aside from where using the skincare and cosmetics, I then looked at the nutrition range. Yeah. And there were several products in there that helped um, build healthy muscle um, and therefore would give strength to some of the areas in my body that were, were caused. Uh, problems um and now uh, as you can see i'm off the crutches um i'm off the crutches i i resisted they wanted to give me lots of drugs um yeah, for the pain of course but i can't take those because i'm vegan and they're tested yeah. on animals yeah. so really i had nowhere to turn except look at my nutrition um oh, and see that. whether i could fix some of the problems in my joints and my muscle and so on and so on um and i have so i'm off the crutches now i don't take any medication i'm not perfect i have a disability i've had it since i was born i'll have it till i die but um you know i walk i walk dogs obviously i'm active at the rescue so i'm walking at least four dogs a day well, well from the sounds of it it's brought you back from the brink and <clears> almost <throat> kind of reverse some of what the journey was supposed well what the yeah. doctor said the journey was going yeah to be. and the doctors would have made that journey as comfortable as possible for me you know the the range of drugs that were available etc would have helped me reduce the pain that i was experiencing and but it was a really difficult decision for me because that would have been really breaching my vegan principles of course, of course. and so i had i had to find something else yeah. Yeah, um yeah. And, you know, I'm not pain free because I've got a disability and I'll always have it. But I walk four dogs a day. Um, you know, it's quite manual work at the rescue. Um, I, it's, it's manual work at the hedgehog rescue as well. So it's not like all I do is sit and, you know, immobile. Um, I've got a very, very active life. And I never would have dreamed I'd be able to have that. A few years ago when yeah. you know i was on morphine daily potentially for the, the amount of pain and so on so jeanette I, i've got to be honest that what you've just shared with us and and, and i know you're not sitting there saying look arbon is a miracle cure no no but no, most certainly what you shared with us which shows that look i was in a position where the doctors 
you know, yeah, we can manage it. We can give you loads of drugs. Yeah. You know, all, the, all the chemicals that we've grown in our lab and you can put them in your DNA, hey, you'll be okay. Yeah. Because of your values, you were like, no, 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 no. You, you found products within your business which have allowed you to manage the situation, almost not, in, not completely solve it, but improve it. Yeah. Whereas the other alternative was to be filled full of lots of pills and have 30 yeah. or 40 bottles of pills to take every day. I think that's a fantastic story. And I really do believe that for you to, again, you're not lying, but to impress upon people the power of your product. No, that that's right. And, and our products are only about. dietary supplements, Nigel, at the end of the yeah. day. They're, they're, not, yeah. they're not drugs. Yeah. Um, but I do feel that having made those steps towards improving my nutrition um, has helped significantly. And it's helped enough that I can cope, you know, with the yeah. situation rather than um, accepting the level of drugs that it would have been needed for me to have a pain-free existence, if yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And I think um, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thing there as well, what you're saying. Nutrition, people. Nutrition. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got Jeanette who you can speak to. Um, there's people like Natalie Hurdley who talks yeah. about nutrition. Natalie you know, talks about nutrition all the time. And she's had lots of clients that she's absolutely. improved situations yeah. for absolutely. through the nutrition that she's absolutely. helped them with. You yeah. know, we live, even though COVID has been here, you know, people are still trying to live very busy lives and forgetting about themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, we need fuel, but we need the right type of fuel, people. So, yeah. If you are in a place right now where the energy levels are dipping or you're not feeling quite right, quite yourself, before you maybe run to the doctor, have a look at what you're putting in your body first. Yeah. And if yeah. you want a little bit of guidance, speak to Jeanette. You know, yeah. she'll be out. I'm sure she'll, she'll happily speak to you. Yeah. Fantastic. And I, I, would Jeanette, de you I would definitely urge, I would definitely urge people to have a chat to a qualified nutritionist. If you are struggling, um, you know, the GPs, as amazing a job as they do, they're not all necessarily qualified not, nutritionist they're, they're, yeah so they if you're looking know, for alternatives like yeah if you're looking for alternatives then there's plenty of people out there that can help you through those types of issues yeah, um yeah. rather than feel like you've no alternative that's where i was i felt trapped i felt like there was no alternative um so um i'm glad i did well, what i did frozen or are frozen <laughs> uh, I'm back. You're back. Oh, you're back. You're back. You're back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we said it would freeze, didn't we? Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Right. So, um, what advice would you give somebody who was looking to start a business today, right now, in 2021? Um, I would. I would say definitely do something that you love. Yeah. And that probably means doing something aligned with your values. You know, so um, I talk to my friend who regularly who's a dog groomer. You know, she doesn't feel like that's a job because oh, she, lo she loves, loves it. it so much that, uh, and it's it's really fun. You know, she had a previous career and she she went into into dog grooming, and um, she grooms all the dogs that I have passing through through my house, and it's more it's more of a life vocation for her than it is. A job if that makes sense yeah um a bit similar to my selection of our bond you know the alignment with my values i think people oh, um again. if you're going to put that <laughs> amount of work into a new business definitely do something that's aligned with your values definitely yeah definitely um value. Any, anything else that you'd want to any other tips that you'd want to share um no i think that's it yeah okay, okay excellent and is there anything that the people watching can do for you right now is there anything that you could do any support you need um that you know the people watching lurking who are going to watch it on replay later that they can do to support you um well obviously if anybody's interested in our bond as a brand then please do get in touch i can happily send you some information um but i think you know supporting groups like you have nigel is really really important um because i spoke to many people during covid where actually some of the online network links that they've made through their business have been really really valuable yeah. when we've not been able to go and see people and we've not been able to visit people or we've not been able to go into salons or wherever it might be where yeah. we've normally maybe conduct our business um so um i think 
I, I would say to people, definitely continue supporting groups like yours because actually um, they've brought such value to people during such a, a really awful time, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's really important. I think it's amazing um, what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, so I think this is about watching, you know, helping everybody to rise up. And the one thing that COVID has taught or should have taught the world and business owners most certainly is that you are not alone. Yeah. Uh, although running your business is a lonely job, it isn't just you. It, you know, all you need to do is pick up a phone yeah. or send a message and you can get a lot of people who come back to you and support you and, yeah. and ask questions. You know, you haven't got to sit there thinking, you know, I can't do this. I can't work this out. There's, there's always someone who can help you. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Hey, Pat Cannon. Hope you're well, sir. Um, okay, well, Jeanette, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Like I Thank say, you. I do believe your 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 journey, the story about what you went through, most certainly on the medical side, really, really powerful. And if you um, can find a way of making that part of your messaging, not because yeah. you're saying to people, yeah. oh, take this, it's going to solve all your ills, yeah. but more so, look, the right nutrition can get you in the right place. Yeah. I wasn't having the right nutrition. I thought I was, I was vegan. Yeah. I wasn't having the meat, the dairy, all that stuff, but I still wasn't getting the right uh, nutrition. Yeah. I did this. Now I am. Now I'm, now I'm feeling much better. Yeah. And I think yeah. that in itself is enough. Um, you know, I was speaking to a colleague this morning. Um, I, I, I've got a friend who we speak every two weeks. He lives in Japan. And we were talking about the fact that people don't drink enough water. We don't yeah. put enough natural liquid in our bodies yeah um, you know and then we wonder why we're all dried up at the end of the day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know two two liters a day i mean two liters is bloody hard but it is. It two is. liters a day and you actually will do your body more good than, yeah. than than taking a pack of vitamins which you ain't actually sure what's in them sometimes yeah. so you know um fantastic well jeanette thank you so much um uh, we'll, we'll have a little debrief afterwards people thank you for watching uh, Jeanette if you could go back to the page when we finished hey Natasha I'll see you in a bit drop all of your links into the comments yeah so, I will yeah your Arvon page yeah. your Facebook page the doggy uh, rescue home anything <laughs> that's going to support you put all those links in there and then if people do want to connect with you they can they can get in touch with you later sure. on. People, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. I shall see you next week. I can't remember Thanks who we've everyone. got on. We've got someone super. I can't remember who it is. But yeah, you'll see the video next week anyway. <laughs> um, have a fantastic rest of the day. And I shall see you all later. Jeanette, I shall see you on the other side. Hold on. <laughs>